In this video, we're going to take a look at a data structure called union find. So a union find is basically a data structure that keeps track of the elements that we have in a non-overlapping disjoint subsets, right? So let's say we have a graph where we have two nodes that are undirectional, right? So we have node A is connected to node B, and node B is also connected to node A. And we also have another graph, right? We also have another subset, uh, I should say. So C is connected to D, and D is also connected to C, right? So you can see that we have two disjoint sets because one, we have those two nodes connected to each other. And we also have one subset that's those two nodes connected to each other, right? But these two subsets are not related. So what we can do is we can use a union find data structure to be able to keep track of those two subsets so that we will not lose track of them. And what we can also do is that we can also be able to unite those two or combine those two subsets as one, right? So you can see here, we call it union find, or we sometimes call it disjoint set, right? So basically, this data structure basically supports those two main functions. So one of them is to find the subsets, right? To find the current subset, the root of the current subset, right? Or the root of the current cluster. So you can see that I can try to find the root, right? If I pass in 8 to this function, I want to find the root of this subset. In this case, this subset has a root of one right you can see this one this node pointing this node this node has a parent of this node and this node is the parent of this node right so this is basically a parent or the root of the subset right the entire subset so you can see that we're going to return this node and we, we also have a function called union basically it takes two subset right in this case it takes two node from a from two different subset right if i want to take node eight and node four I want to be able to call this function, right? I pass in eight as the X and then four as the Y. We want to be able to merge those two cluster, right? And then in this case, if we were to do this function, usually what we're going to do is we're going to keep going up and then find the parent, right? And is basically number of elements that we have in the current subset. So we're basically iterating and traversing up all the way to find the parent. And this will give us a linear time complexity. So what we can do is we can use path compression to make the to make this uh, subset to be more flatter, right? Because you can see that we have a kind of like a linkless, right? Basically, we have this node pointing this node, this node pointing this node, and this node pointing this node. So what we can do instead is we can actually be able to compress this into a different, be able to compress the path, right? So that we don't have to use linear time complexity to find the 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 root of each and every single node, and you can see that. Uh, basically, if I want to call, I want to find node 5 in this subset, right, in the subset, I basically start at here, and I try to find its parent, and then this node will try to find its parent until we have a node that is basically the parent or the root of this entire subtree or this subset, and then we're going to return that. But what we're going to do is that while we're traversing up, while we're going up, we're basically going to get each and every single node points to the root node, right? So you can see that we're going to get this node pointing to this node, but this node has a parent of this node, and this node has a root, which is what no one, right? So we're going to get each and every single of those nodes that we traverse points to this node. So we're going to get node 5 pointing to node 1 instead of pointing to node 3, right? So now we have something like this, right? In this case, we have both node 3 and node 5 point to the root of the entire subset, right? So now you can see we basically shrink or compress the path. And you can also see that we, if we try to call, if I want to find eight, right? So same thing, I basically try to find the root, keep going up. So I compress the graph, I compress the tree while I try to go up, right? So you can see that I have no eight at the end point to the root of this entire subset. So this will basically improve time complexity down to constant on average, right? So you can also see that we have union by size, right? So this union by size kind of basically when we try to unite or try to combine two subset, right? So you can see this is one subset, this is one subset. We basically try to combine those two subset into one. So what we basically going to do is we're basically just going to combine a subset that has, or basically get the smaller subset in size, the root of the, the smaller subset points to the root of the larger subset, right? So in this case, we're going to get no 2.01, no, no right? So this will basically unite 
uh, those two subsets together. And the reason why we have the smaller subsets, the root of the smaller subset point to the root of the, uh, the bigger subset's root is because this will reduce the number of path compression that we have to do, right? If I do it the opposite way where we do this, right? You can see that we have one, two, three, four. So you can see that we have so many nodes that we have to do path compression to get these nodes point to the new root or the, the new root, which is node two, right? So that will basically reduce the number of path compression that we have to do. So to do this in code, basically I have a class called union find, and this union find has two methods. So one of them is parents and one of them is size. So the parents integer array, basically you can see that I define a parents integer array that is equal to the size of n. And then the size is also in this case is uh, integer uh, integer array with the size of n. Basically, what we're trying to do here is that we're going to, let's say we have these arrays, like one, like, let's say we have uh, four nodes in our graph, and then the parents is going to be itself, right? So for index zero, or node zero has a parent of zero, right? The parent of this node is zero. The parent of node one is one. The parent of node two is two. The parent of node three is three, right? Because those, because right now we have not we have these nodes not connected to each other at all, right? Their parent is basically itself. And then in this case, the size, in this case, the size is going to be uh, one by default because here we're trying, we only have one node in this subset, right? In this case, this is the one subset and it only has one node. This is one subset, it only has one node. This is one subset and it only has one node and so on. So what we're going to do then is we're going to have a two function, right? In this case, we have two operations. So one of them is the find function, right? We, like I said, mentioned before, you give me a, uh, a node and then we're just going to find the parent node of this node, right? And then you also, we also have a function that takes the two nodes and then we're just going to return the, uh, we're going to combine those two nodes subset as one, right? And then we also have the find component says, basically we want to find the size of the current subset, right? We're basically trying to find the parent node of this current node value. And we want to, and we will just return the size of the current subset, right? So you can see here, um, basically what I did is I also have a num of components by default is this is the number of components or this is the number of subsets that we have inside our uh, inside our graph, right? So you can see by default, we have four subsets, one, two, three, four. So if we want to find a node, right? In this case, what I basically try to do here is I can find the node. Uh, it, in this case, the root is the current node. So root does not equal the parents of the current root, right? Current node uh, or current root. Uh, now we're just going to continue to find it until we find it until we find the current root is equal to the parent of the root, right? Um, in this case, by default, you can see the parent of zero is zero, right? So you can see we're just returning the root, which is basically itself. And you can see we also implement the path compression, right? We basically compress the path, compress the the, the path that we traverse, right? Like I mentioned before, if we have a graph like um, these two are connected, right? And this is the parent of the subset. So if I want to find node two's parent, then I have to convert, uh, then I have to compress this by getting node two pointing node zero, node one pointing node zero, and so on. And this is basically what the, the code is trying to do, right? We get the previous parent, and then we're gonna get the current parent is equal to root, and then the current is equal to previous parent so that I can move on to the next node, right? And remember current, is equal to the node that we passed in, right? So we basically compress this path, right? So that if I were to traverse that node, if, if I want to find the parent node of this node again, I can do that in a constant time complexity, right? And then in this case, what we're trying to focus on here is we want to unite, right? We want to union those uh, those nodes, and that's what we're doing here, right? First, what we're doing here is that we're find we want to find the parent, we want to find the root of two node that we have, right? In this case, the parent is this one. And the, let's say we want to merge those two, right? Those two are the parents. So in this case, they do equal each other, then we'd return. If they don't, we continue, right? In this case, they don't equal each other. So what we do then is we're basically just going to have size. If the size is equal to each other, right? It's going to be right here. So if they equal each other, what we're going to do is that we're going to get the parent, right? Of no one parent 
is equal to no2's parent, right? So this no's parent is equal to the no's2 parent, right? So then basically we're just going to get this no point this node, right? And this node is the parent. And then we're just going to get the size of no2's parent. So the size of no2's parent, uh, which is this node, right? The size of this is basically equal to the this node's parent's size, or the roots of this node's subset size, plus the current subset size, right? Is basically one plus one is two. And then we decrease the number of components or number of subsets that we have, because now we have this as a subset, and this is a subset, and this is a subset, right? We now we have three. Okay, so if I want to merge, like let's say we want to merge node zero with node three, right? Those two subset together, then what's going to happen is the same thing. We want to find the parents of those two. In this case, we have the parents one, this is two, right? And then we check to see if they're the same. They're not the same, right? So what we're going to do is that we're going to see who has a bigger size. In this case, we have size uh, for no one parent is going to be two size of no two parents two or sorry is one so in this case what we're going to do is we're going to do the first operation right we're going to do this con condition so basically we say parents at no two parents is equal to no one parent right so parents of no two's parent which is this one now is going to point to the no one's parent which is this one right here okay and then we're going to get size of no one parent plus equal to the size of no two parent which is the size of this subset so now we have a subset of has a subset of size of three right so now we have this and then now you can see we have a size of three right and now we decrease the number of components or the number of subsets that we have right and now let's say we want to merge those two again so if i want to merge no two and no uh no zero and no two in this case i find their parents they have the same parent in this case no one then we're just going to return right because they have the same parent right so we can just uh, not do anything. Okay, so now you know how we can be able to implement union find uh, in code. Now let's take a look at a legal problem called number of connected components in a undirected graph. Now this problem can be solved using DFS or BFS, but for this video, we're going to focus on how we can be able to solve this problem using union find. So basically, you, we have a graph of a number of nodes, and we're basically given an integer n, an array of edges where edges at i is equal to a at i and b at i, right? So we have, uh, we basically, the each and every single array represents the edge, represents the connection of two vertex. So in the case that there's an edge between uh, this vertex and this vertex in the graph, right? So return the number of connected components in the graph. So you can see here, we have n is equal to five. So that means we have five nodes in our or five vertex in our graph and we have our edges so you can see that we have index zero or no zero point to no one that's one connection or one edge we also have uh connection one and sorry no one and no two is pointing to each other we have a connection there you can also see we have a no three point to no four so you can see we have a connection there but those two are are disjoint subsets right so we're basically returning how many subsets that we have in our graph. And here you can see we have another example, right, where we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? You can see that 2 and 3, they're now connected. So now we only have one subset because these two are connected, right? So we're just returning one. So how can we solve this problem using this join uh, or union find, right? So basically what I did here is I... Um, same class that we defined earlier. So basically it has the find function, it has the union function, and uh, we're basically just going to uh, find the um, find number of subsets that we have, right? So find number of disjoint subsets. So like I said before, we create an instance of a union find class. And then what we're basically going to do is that for each and every single edge, we're going to union those edge right we're going to actually form that connection in this case we're going to union those two node in this case no one and no two we're going to union them together as one subset and then at the end we're basically just going to return the number of uh the number of components that we have right so in this case number of components is basically how many subsets that we have you can see that every time when we unite a two subsets 
we basically decrease the number of components, right? Uh, if we unite them all, right? If we unite those two subsets, if we unite those two subsets, we will decrease the number of components or the number of uh, subsets that we have, right? So at the end, you can see that we're basically returning how many subsets that we have at the end. So it's pretty simple. Um, and you can see that this is how we solve this problem using union fine.